Hey everyone, it's Liz, the Frugal Libertarian from FrugalLibertarian.com. Uh, at FrugalLibertarian.com, my three F's are frugality, family, and freedom. I've talked, especially on my blog, a lot about frugality so far. I have done a little bit about freedom, and I haven't done much about family yet. And so I figured I wanted to do a video on family, because that would be a little easier to explain where I'm coming from and what my opinions are based on and why. So that's going to be today's video. The first thing you have to understand about me in terms of family is how my family was structured. My closest sibling to me in age is nine years older than me. My two older siblings than that are 15 and 13 years older than me. My closest cousin in age is nine years older than me. And my older cousins, their kids are roughly eight and nine years younger than me. So in my family, there is a massive gap and I am right in the middle of it. I was basically an only child who happened to have siblings because in elementary school, I had a brother I had a brother who had already left college and was running a business. I had another brother in college in elementary school. In middle school, all my siblings had moved out. Um, so I didn't have those experiences of, you know, your mom telling you two to shut up and knock off whatever you're doing or playing with cousins on a holiday or anything. I really didn't have any of that. I was sort of in this weird position where I was just sort of alone. And um, I have no experience with that kind of behavior. And so I think this made me first of all closer with my parents than most people were because all of my family trips, my family vacations, everything was me and my parents, not me and my siblings or me and my cousins. It was me and my parents. So I'm very, very close with my parents. I This really shaped, I think, how I view family. And because I didn't have cousins and siblings to play with, I was also very close with my maternal grandmother. Because of the large age difference, my parents were much older when I was born. My father's parents had already passed away before I was born, so I never even met them. My maternal grandparents were, of course, still around when I was born. My maternal grandfather passed away when I was in first grade. And then my grandmother, my Nana, died when I was 15. And I took that actually very, very, very hard because I was very, very close with my grandmother. And a lot of what I think influenced me was the way she was. My wedding ring, and technically the engagement ring, I just don't wear the engagement ring very often, um, are hers. I wanted to use her rings, and that was my choice. And I kind of said that to my husband when we started talking about, you know, will we get married? Will we not get married? That kind of thing. I kind of said, I don't want you to go out and buy me a ring. I just want to use Nana's. And that was it. I got her desk. The weirdest thing I inherited from her was her cat. And we had Emmeline until she was 23 years old. She was just an amazing, amazing woman. She's kind of hard to describe, to be honest, because of her uniqueness. She was sort of a proto-feminist because she was believed in what would later become first wave feminism, uh, first wave feminist beliefs, but she believed in them way back in like the 1940s and early 1950s. When my mom was a little child, my grandmother decided she wanted to live her dream and become a nurse. Her oldest brother was a doctor, and she wanted to be a nurse, and she'd always wanted to be a nurse. My grandfather, however, was Italian. He was born in Italy. He came to the United States when he was 16, and he was a very traditional, heavy-handed husband. And I believe the argument was something along the lines of, no wife of mine is going to work outside of the home. At which point, I believe my grandmother told him where to go. <laughs> and went and enrolled in nursing school and became a registered nurse. And she worked at Stanford Hospital in Stanford, Connecticut. 
um, for pretty much her, her entire career. And um, her friend, some of her friends that became family friends were from her nursing days, from the Nurses Association or from her college days. But she was very proud of her nursing. My grandmother believed in medicine really as a science. She believed in the science of medicine. And she viewed the human body in a very clinical, medical way. My grandmother was also a person who, I'm trying to think of the right word, I don't even know, I think it would be both a mixture of compassionate and, and, and she had a great deal of empathy for other people. And she really for, believed in forgiveness, but she believed that human beings are faulty creatures and people make mistakes. People have to be allowed to have, to make their own choices. She used that in how she interacted with people. She always tried to figure out why people would do the things they do. And she always tried to give people the benefit of the doubt for why they would do things. So you can kind of see why that affected me so much. I was around her all the time and that was the way she was. She was very compassionate, she had a great deal of empathy, but she was also very rational and logical and realistic. She believed in reality more than anything else. And um, and like I said, she was she believed in science, she believed in history. Um, she was the one, uh, in my post I wrote about how I'm still not a good cleaner, she was the one who said I have better things to do than dust. Um, and her better things were read books and learn things instead of dusting. One of the things she left me with, I think, is an idea of what family is supposed to be. You know when I said she was a nurse and I said I mentioned she had family friends that she met nursing? One of them was her friend Peggy, who our family adopted. Peggy was a nurse. She was actually the nurse working in the, um, what's it called? The nursery at the hospital when I was born. So I met her when I was born. Peggy was a friend of my grandmother's and they were both registered nurses. Peggy's husband died long before she did, long before she did. And she had no children. All of her family were in Canada, but she didn't want to leave here because Connecticut had become her home. So what did my grandmother do? My grandmother made her into a family member. My grandmother told her she was coming to holidays and she had no choice. <laughs> and Peggy became a family member. Uh, even after my grandmother passed away, Peggy was at my wedding. And um, one of my blankets I have, Peggy crocheted for me. And my parent, my mother and her, um, her sister, my aunt, when Peggy got very, very elderly, basically said they were her daughters so that they could help her. And they visited her every single week. We celebrated her birthday. She became a de facto member of the family because my grandmother had told us that, because she had set it up that way. My grandmother believed that family is what you make it, not necessarily what your blood is. She had two brothers. And like I said, the first one was a doctor and his wife, I believe, was a doctor as well. My grandmother really was close with them. But then the other brother and her had a falling out because she didn't like his wife. And she didn't think they were good together. And basically my grandmother, before she died, she took these books and journaled all family stories and information, dates names of people, different things like that. And in her journaling about Uncle Johnny, she mentions that he has a wife and the less said about her, the better. And that's all she writes. So my grandmother, it seems from having this issue with her family, seemed to have built around her the idea that her friends were her family as well. That it was the love you share and the desire you have to be in each other's lives that makes you family, not necessarily that you're born to your family. And that's something, like I said, my mom seems to be repeating and I'm repeating and my sister's repeating and we all sort of feel that way. 
Um, for example, my siblings' in-laws have largely been accepted into the family as family members, not just, you know, well, you go there on a holiday and then you'll come to us. No, no, no. We all come together. Um, in fact, her, my sister's in-laws, she has a father-in-law and a stepmother-in-law and then a mother-in-law and a stepfather-in-law. So there's four of them. We call them my, they are f four of my son's adopted grandparents because I want them to be like a grandparent to him. I want him to look at them as a grandparent and I want them to think of him as a grandchild because that's the way I think of them in our lives. I consider them part of my family. So why wouldn't they be a part of the family? Um, same thing, my sister-in-law, um, who's my brother-in-law's wife, I love her parents. Her parents are some of my favorite people on earth. They really are, I love them and I wanted them in my family. And so they are in my family. I invite them to family functions when I'm hosting the family function. Um, my son, again, calls them Gammy and Grandpa. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I wanted them to be, again, an adopted grandparent to my son. This was all set up for me by my grandmother because that was what Peggy was, was my adopted grandparent. Um, and there were people at my mother's church that we used to call my adopted grandparents as well that were friends. And they, you know, so my mom called them that and wanted them to be in my life. When my father's parents died, my grandmother absorbed my father's family. His siblings, his siblings' children who lived here, because he has siblings that don't live in Connecticut, or didn't live in Connecticut, I should say. The siblings that lived here and their children, my grandmother absorbed. She became de facto matriarch of the entire family. Um, when my Nana passed away, I remember my cousins being pallbearers and everybody being there. And, but that's the way my grandmother was. It was, you guys lost the heads of your family. You're now gonna be in my family. And that's the way she is. So that's kind of how I've grown up believing family is supposed to be. It's not just the people you're blood related to. It is the people you care about. It's the people you love. It's the people you want in your family, not just the people who happen to be in your family. I, I very much think the more people who love your child, the better. So that's part of this too. Um, all of our friends, all of our friends are aunt and uncle, and the, our friends who have kids, their kids we call cousin for him. But I want him to think of them in that way because I feel like the more he thinks of them as his aunts and uncles, the more love he'll have around him. But that is where I come from when I talk about family. I'm not necessarily referencing just the people I'm biologically related to or related to by marriage. I am referencing the people I love and I want to consider in my family. That is family to me. And I got that from my grandmother. So that's kind of the way I am. And I think different factors have led to that. But that's kind of why I wanted to do this video. I wanted to kind of explain before I start writing different stories of family and, and, and doing more videos on my family, I wanted you to have an idea of what that definition is to me. So thanks for watching. Feel free to comment and let me know, did I just piss you off royally or do you agree? Do you have people in your children's lives who aren't biologically related but you think are very important members of the family? If you're not subscribed already, subscribe, hit like, Click share if this is something you believe in and um, go to my blog. You can read uh, some of what I've written on these topics at frugallibertarian.com. I'm Liz. Have a wonderful day. Bye.